Tuka, or place of meeting, has provided critical support and education for thousands of Australian Indigenous students in the last 30 years. Currently, Wallatooka boasts some of the most successful higher education statistics in relation to student enrolments and completion in just about all areas of higher education. The Wallatooka Institute supports over 800 students and has a staff capacity of 44 over three campuses. It has also managed to embed Australian Indigenous education into programs offered at the University of Newcastle. To celebrate 30 years of Wallatooka's role in the advancement and social justice of Australian Indigenous people, we need to recognise the leadership, dreams and dedication of the pioneers who made Wallatooka possible. In the late 60s, early 70s, following the 67 referendum, the university had been approached by members of the local Koori community to provide an Aboriginal welfare officer at the university. Community members such as Uncle Bill Smith and John Ferguson were heavily involved, but it wasn't until the Whitlam government strengthened self-determination and passed anti-discrimination laws in the mid-70s that Koori people were supported at the university and the College of Advanced Education in Newcastle. Nationally, in the early 70s, there were eight AB study recipients, including Uncle John Heath. Well, my involvement with Wallatooka goes back to the beginning. I was part of the uh, Brains Trust, if you like, that conceptualised Wallatooka. And it was in the period of time where there had been a push through the NAEC to provide opportunities and support facilities for Aboriginal people to attend tertiary education institutions and was able to do this in conjunction with the um, Awabical Co-op. And in those days, the late mid and, and late 70s, um, there were very few Aboriginal people who were actively involved in um, Aboriginal community development in, in this area and, uh, and I guess in many other areas as well. In 1981, the Principal and Deputy Principal of the Newcastle College of Advanced Education, Dr Edward Richardson and Dr Douglas Huxley, consulted members of the newly developed New South Wales AECG, including Professor Bob Morgan, Professor John Lester and Aunty Laura Williams, on how they could implement the Graduate 1000 Koori Teachers by 1990 program. In 1978, there was a... a a national inquiry into teacher education, ironically chaired by a professor that was uh, here at Newcastle University. His name was Ock Moody, and so it became known as the Ock Moody Report. But that report identified that there were only 72 trained teachers in Australia uh, in 1978. So the National Aboriginal Education Committee then set about putting in place a strategy to train more teachers and it became known as a thousand teachers by 1990. In my opinion that's what was a catalyst that opened up universities um, beyond teacher education. So the doctors program that's here at Newcastle University, we were instrumental in studying that as well and look where it is today. It again trains more Aboriginal doctors than any other institution in the country. In 1982, a research application was made by John Heath and Noma Bond to set up a support unit at the Newcastle College of Advanced Education. At that time, there were 37 students enrolled at the college, mainly in the areas of teaching and welfare. There were no Koori students enrolled at the university. However, the local community also wanted Koori doctors, and so the development of the Indigenous Australian Medical Students Program had also begun with the involvement from the New South Wales AECG, university staff including Dr Rob Sampson Fisher, Dr Julianne Schwanke, Richard Gibson and Michael Anderson. The program was up and running in 1985. In 1983, Wallatooka was set up under the Huxley Library to support students and address issues of student retention. A little enclave space downstairs where I first began to start coming out to um to the college, uh, Gail Garvey, uh, I think, was involved in those earlier days. My association with the with the space was more about trying to develop some community interaction. So I was the CEO of a Wabaka Co-op, but I think back in those days I was the uh, the cultural officer for a Wabaka Co-op, uh, and there seemed to be a lot of good energy in the space. Um, Aboriginal people starting to intellectualise, so I, I seemed to uh, gravitate towards 
this space a fair bit. In 1984, the Commonwealth announced the bicentennial program to provide funding for a proposed new building. The funding came up for us to, to accept it and there was big uh, going-ons about it, whether we should take the money or not, because it was called blood money. And uh, there was some uh, really um, big arguments over it, whether we should take it or not take it. It was like all struggles, it wasn't painless, apart from individual sacrifices. As a community here in Newcastle, we, through the Awabakal Co-op, we had voted in 1984 against accepting bicentennial funding for any programs. And so the CAE gained support from some of the Aboriginal students who were then enrolled and also their parents to show that there was Aboriginal community support for bicentennial funding for a, a building which became known as Wallatooka. But that led to some severe divisions within the community and there were many leaders within the community that would not attend functions at Wallatooka for a number of years because of that. In our original concept of Wallatooka, we saw it as not only a place of study for our peoples, but also as a community centre. And its history has shown that it has succeeded in that way, particularly through the cultural activities where Paul Gordon was engaged in the late 80s, early 90s. And um, we had corroboree here, the first um, public corroboree by um, men that have been through law in Newcastle for, for perhaps more than 100 years. In 1989, the College of Advanced Education and the University joined forces and amalgamated. At this time, Wallatooka was then coordinated by Lorraine Thomas and Mandy Kelly became the resource centre manager. So it evolved, I guess, from having very few students mainly doing teacher education, training to become teachers. And then when the amalgamation occurred, things started to, uh, between university and the CAEs, things started then uh, just spread to other uh, disciplines. An associate professor position was also appointed when Wallatooka expanded its operations beyond student support. This position was filled by Dr Bill Jonas and soon after, Tracy Bunder. In 1992, a Diploma of Aboriginal Studies was offered and taught to both Indigenous and non-Indigenous students by Koori lecturers such as Aunty Laura Williams and Deirdre Heitmeyer. I first came to Wallatooka in 1990. Um, I was school teaching at the time and John Heath approached me to come and work in the bridging program. From there I moved on to being the lecturer and acting director of Wallatooka in the old building. I've seen many changes in this place. I've seen it get support from when we first amalgamated with Professor Michael Carter, who just stood so staunchly behind us and gave us every support that he could. There were people like his secretary, um, Suzanne Dorry. There have been so many people that have contributed to the success of Wallatooka, both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal. Well, there was John, Noma and Lorraine to begin with, and Eva Brown. They all worked so hard over in that old building to build a family. We were a family. You'd come back from lectures and there'd be students in your office. You'd have to sort of try and fight for your desk. But it was always a very, very um, supportive family. There was always Bill Jonas behind us, mentoring us. I've been there for 20 years. I started in 1993. I sent a letter to them saying, oh, look, I was looking for a bit of casual work. They interviewed me. I thought, right, well, this is an all right place. I um, took over somebody that was on maternity leave. And 20 years later, I'm still here. I started off as the receptionist. First week I was there, the staff went away to a conference. I was there on my own. And I thought, whoa, what am I going to do now? And the students, it was like a big family atmosphere. All the students were there. They came and said, look, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. They sat with me at reception, showed me what to do. And I thought, this is great. This is a great place. Then there was um, David Donnelly, Suzanne Ede. They were instrumental in helping us put together an academic program. We had gone from being a support unit into a fully fledged academic entity. There was also the Aboriginal support group. 
um, started by Jack Doherty and then we've got his scholarship now. We just grew and grew and grew until we were actually holding our own on the national stage. I remember going to higher ed network meetings and when, what they were still fighting for, we thought, we've got that. We, we've had that for a while. And that was because the university itself, the, the structure and the people working that structure always supported us. The Emilico Research Unit was also set up at this time and was run by Professor John Lester. When I first came and applied for the job as a professor here, and I was driving into the university and I saw a lot of disabled people working in the gardens. And I thought to myself, this is an institution that obviously cares about people and therefore if they've got if they found space in the institution for these type of people and created jobs um, there'll be plenty of space for us. Wallatuka then went through a variety of changes and in October of 2002 the new Birabam building was officially opened named in honour of both the Awabakal Eagle Hawk Totem and the Awabakal Scholar by the same name. This building is a classic example that this university puts it puts its money where its mouth is and has put the money out of its own budgets and set priorities to make sure this building is a part of the whole establishment. Not tucked away somewhere, but a definite statement and I think that's fantastic. Late in 2002, an official merger took place with Gabali, the Indigenous Education Centre on the Arimba campus and became part of Wallatooka School of Aboriginal Studies. Wallatooka has since become an institute due to the merger between the School of Aboriginal Studies, the Support Unit, Indigenous Employment and Indigenous Health. The Wallatooka Institute now operates out of three main campuses, Callaghan, Arimba and Port Macquarie, and has three directors, Associate Professor Peter O'Mara, Professor John Lester and Leanne Holt. This place just excites me and the fact that we've been around for 30 years is just evidence in itself that we've done it. It, it excite me, ex excites me every year to find out how many additional students we've got and principally we get those students because other Aboriginal people who are involved in courses talk to other Aboriginal people. No better way of marketing where we're at so that's our students selling our programs. Wachuka Institute is uh, like for students is a family or a community uh, away from home so they can come here and be themselves and, um, and thrive in that environment within the wider university environment knowing that they have a place to come um, where they can be themselves and I think it's the same for staff as well particularly having the elders here uh, I think that contributes to um, the real strength of Wallatuka and I suppose that's another aspect of the strength of Wallatuka is that um, it does add um, value to the university. I think graduation is a special time because um, seeing the students when they first start they're scared they really some of them really don't know who they are and then to see them graduate and see them as strong individuals um, going out in the world, I think that's probably the reason why I keep coming back here. I'm really excited, by, as I said, by the young people that are here today and I, I really, uh, I want them to, I want them to be a part of the ongoing space, um, be a part of that ongoing cultural presence um, and from there to branch out into their own spaces. So many of those that come here need to begin to start to create those spaces in their own communities. The old people would have called them uh, Kipara or um, you know the old old uh, you know, the old cultural spaces. That's all we need to do. We need to recreate those spaces. So it started very small, but you know today now it's one of the leading um, uh, university programs in the country, and um, all of us that have been a part of it uh, over the years are very proud of that. Thank you.